Hello everyone, welcome to Math Talks. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to continue the series on the non-calculator portion of the GED math test. And we're going to talk about squares, square roots, and rational numbers. So the first thing I want to show you is a list of what are some common squares and square roots. So go ahead and pause your video for a little bit and take a look at this and really kind of analyze this and try and commit to memory these common squares and square roots. It's the first 12. And really, these are going to help you out as you start looking at simplifying square roots and simplifying expressions with rational numbers. One of the nice things that comes about these squares that I like is there's actually a pattern that comes with them. So again, pause the video, see if you can figure out the pattern for the square root or the squares that are happening here. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and you have 9, 16, 25. There's an interesting little pattern that comes about. We're going to take a look at another thing that has to do with squares and square roots, a little tip. I've seen some people make some mistakes with examples like the one up here, that's this and this, as far as the value of these. There is a difference between the square of negative 4 and the negative of 4 squared. And the reason why there's a difference is because in the first one here, you're taking negative 4 times negative 4. And when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive value. So the answer for this is actually positive 16. For the other one, the difference is it's asking for what is the negative of 4 squared. So it's really, what is the negative of 4 times 4? And so 4 times 4 is 16, but the negative of 16 is negative 16. So if you see examples like this, please keep in mind there is a difference between these two values. Another thing I want to cover with this is that there are, obviously, there's perfect squares, which is what were found in that chart I first gave you, but there's also non-perfect squares and non-perfect square roots. And some examples of those would be like the square root of 48 and the square root of 125. And so when you get to examples like this, I would recommend using what's called a factor tree to simplify them. So let's take a look at what that is. I'm going to go ahead and write square root of 48 up top here. A factor tree just basically means you start breaking down the value of your number underneath the square root symbol until you can simplify it as far down as you can. And what you do is you take first and find two numbers that multiply together to get 48. So if you want to start small, you could do something like 24 times 2. Okay? The idea is to get down to as, as far down and simplified as you can until you can't get any lower. Like 2 doesn't break down any further. It's actually it's what's called a prime number. So you want to get the numbers like that. So 24, I can break down even further. It's going to be 6 times 4. The 2, I'm just going to drop down. Once you get to a number you can't go any further, you just drop it down every time. 6 will break down into 3 times 2. 4 will break down into 2 times 2. And 2 just drops down by itself. So now we have these prime numbers, 3 and then 2, 2, 2, and 2. Once you can't break it down any further, the last thing you want to do is you want to find pairs of numbers. And what you do when you find pairs of numbers is you take one from each. So I have a pair of twos and another pair of twos. So the way it works is you take one value from each pair and you put it on the outside of your square root. So I have two times two outside of my square root for every pair, you take one number and you multiply it by each, each number that is represented. So because I have two pairs of twos, I take one from each and multiply them together. Any number that's not paired from your examples, in this case three, so let me change the color here, this three here, because there's no pairs to combine it with or take it out, I'm going to put it back into my square root. Okay, and then you want to simplify the outside. So 2 times 2, let me go back to my blue, which rhymes coincidentally. 2 times 2 is 4, square root 3. So this is the simplified version of the square root of 48. So let's take a look at another example with square root 125. 125, 
okay? The idea is you want to find two numbers that multiply together to get 125. Well, any number that ends in 25 has a factor of 25, so I know that's one of my values. And it happens to be times 5, okay? 5 is a prime number, so I can't go any further than that. 25, I can break down into 5 times 5, okay? And so now I have three fives. I can't go any further than that. I want to look for pairs of numbers. So I have a pair of fives here, and then I have a solo five all by itself. So I'm going to take one number from the pair, put it on the outside of my square root, and then I'm going to take any number that's left inside the square root, not paired, and put it back inside. And so I can't do anything else with this. There's no numbers on the outside to multiply together. So this is my final answer. The square root of 125 is really the same thing as 5 root 5, or 5 square root 5. So when you get to problems like this, I hope it really helps you out in simplifying the values of square roots, whether they're perfect squares or imperfect squares. But really, use a factor tree, find two numbers that multiply together to get the number inside your square root, and start breaking them down from there. Once you break it down as far as you can, look for pairs of numbers, take one from each pair, and put it on the outside, and whatever is left over, keep it on the inside. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.